It's week six of the National Football League. And up next, we'll see Jalen Hurts. He's going to have to air it out play this week. It's the Eagles and the Browns next on Madden Football. It's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Eagles team as they interplay here. They're coming with some fresh legs as they got the week off last week thanks to the early season bye. And usually you hope your bye comes a little bit later in the year, but when you get a chance to get fresh legs back, you take that time and you run with it. Meanwhile, for the Browns here, they were losers their last time out. They're going to try to get back in the win column, but obviously they're going to have to do that in a hostile environment. And sometimes it actually works to your advantage. Now you've got to band together your team, the us against the world mentality. Let's see if they can use it and get a victory. Oh, a good looking return set up here. And he'll return this one all the way out of the other side of the field. Out come the Eagles for the first time, and the man in charge at quarterback in his fifth year now, Jalen Hurts. And coming off of an early season open week, and in this situation, what he told us when we sat down with him was he spent a lot of time working on fundamentals, kind of getting back to basics during that time, as opposed to having to worry about healing up or resting up. It's too early in the season. Get back to the basics, get his game going again. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Hurt sets up to throw it. This will be caught by Brown. You look at this Browns defense. They find themselves just a couple of spots outside of the top 10 defending the pass, number 12 in the league. I think if you talk to their head coach, you'll get a nice answer about how much he likes his team and what they're doing. But at the end of it, he would admit there's definitely room to improve. He's got his running back out of the backfield. He'll get this one down near the 20 yard line, just shy of the 20. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards to play. A lot of times the key is just get him the ball and let him do his thing. And they got it out to him on the left side. And he did exactly that. Excellent run after the catch. On first and ten, it's game well. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. The Eagles at one and three here in the early part of the year. And they come in with fresh legs. They got the extra time off thanks to an early season open week. And usually your hope is that your open week comes a little bit later in the year. But when you get a chance to get your fresh legs back, you have to take that time and run with it. And that's what they're trying to get done here. And hold on here because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, are going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. From the two, here's first and goal. Gainwell. Trying to get to the goal line, but he's going to be stopped just short at the one. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. to run with Gamewell, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. How about this Browns defense they've held so far? This is now third and goal. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. They'll try to surge ahead with Gamewell, and he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. Oh, he didn't spike it. He faked it. And that'll be caught. And he's going to get into the end zone. So the fake spike works. And they score. Dallas Goddard, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Eagles' decision to go for it pays off with six points. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. 
And this is off the left upright, but he banks it through. How about that one? And that time, a nine-play drive. And the drive was all finished off on the touchdown catch by Dallas Goddard. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. So here are the Browns under head coach Kevin Stefanski, the former national champion at Clemson, bringing him onto the field. And that's the signal caller, Deshaun Watson. Would you say that last week's performance by him, workmanlike in terms yeah. of numbers? One touchdown, one pick, but obviously a loss. Yeah, and that's the bottom line for him. All he cares about is how do we find a way to win the game. Maybe he leans on a few other parts of the offense and hopefully springs a receiver or two for it. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. So eight yards on the completion there, and it'll be second in a couple. A first carry now for Nick Chubb, and this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. Well, this defense for the Eagles, they have certainly had their struggles to start the season, but they put it all together in getting that first victory a week ago. And no matter what's done throughout a ball game, it always comes back to blocking and tackling. That's the essence of football. But I think it's hard for people to understand just how difficult it is to tackle, especially open field. Very few missed tackles on tape that I saw last game. This team does a nice job of getting their opponents on the ground. On fourth down, on is Corey Bajorquez to punt. He punted four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. On the return, it's Rodgers. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. And the Eagles offense and their quarterback coming out for their second drive. And he continues to be a nightmare for teams to defend in the red zone. See the graphic. He's second in the NFL in terms of rushing touchdowns by a quarterback. Heck of a start. A 30-yard pickup on their first play from scrimmage. What a first quarter he's been putting together. He scored the touchdown earlier, and he's in phase right out of the gate. Right now, he's playing with such confidence, he doesn't believe that they have an answer for him no matter what they do on defense. And here's another big play to prove his point. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 39-yard line. They go play action with Hurts. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Offense. So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that can be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Call it a gain of 12, but of course not a first down due to the previous penalty. So from the 37, here's a second and eight. Option handoff for Gainwell. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Hurts. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. The drive stays alive. A third down gain of eight. From the gun, a give to Gainwell. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Here now, second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Back to Gainwell here on second down. And a fight's through one man, and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. 50 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. They toss this out right to Gainwell. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. 
A minimal gain as we tick down inside of a minute remaining in the opening quarter. Seven yards left for second down. Ball at the 10. They'll run. Here's the rookie out of Clemson. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Here's Hurts to throw. And he will find his man on the outside. And he will be out of bounds here on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. Now second quarter action from Philadelphia, and it's the Eagles in possession as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. The kick by Elliott is good. So another scoring guy here, Charles, and an early two-score lead. You'd like the six there, partner, but you'll take the three, and I think they have to be happy about the way they moved the ball in these first two drives. They have to feel good about their opportunities the rest of the game. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And a great return, solid field position. He's up all the way to the 45-yard line. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. Now they dipped a game below 500 following the loss last week. And you get the sense that maybe this team's at a little bit of a crossroads here. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to put it because what's that old malaprop? If you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> because this crew, they're losing ground fast. They've got to start winning some ball games. And the good teams, they're starting to separate themselves, and these guys are being left behind. Watson. He's going to look deep for more. And this is taken in at the five. Touchdown, Browns. Elijah Moore, 45 yards. And the Browns have cut it back within a score. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. That was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Extra point by York is up and good. And that'll cut it to three at 10-7. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. Oh, a good return up past the 30. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. Eagles offense returns to the fold, and we get a closer peek at Kenneth Gainwell. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Those guys have an innate sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Back to Gainwell here on second down. That's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. 74 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first down. Throwing his hurts. And this one nearly picked off. Kind of surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but get away it does, and it's second down. From the gun, here's a run by Gainwell. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. They'll drop to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to pee. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 17-yard line. That's a third down conversion to 24 yards there. Nice play. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. Straight ahead, it's Gamewell. 
And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Ball at the eight here for second and a yard. Maybe a touch less. And they'll stay on the ground with Gainwell again. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. The offense on third down, they've converted three out of five thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. And I don't think he got there. No, they stop him right where it all started. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. They're going on fourth down with Hurts. And able to catch it, but he's out of bounds. Now the throw took him beyond the sideline, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Yeah, so they get that one, Charles, on the right tackle. The yeah, oftentimes in that spot, you're trying to work against a defender, trying to set the edge in the running game, and you're trying to drive around and get your body twisted so that he can't get there. Sometimes your hands get too involved. And yeah, he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. Behind the chain, second and 13. Coming right, this is Chubb on the toss. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 10-yard line. It's a seven-yard pickup. They'll be looking now to third and six. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. A shotgun snap for Watson. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. from the gun. It's a give to Chubb. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Sidney Brown in on the tackle. Second and five. And Chubb will try the middle here. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Heavy set out there on third and one. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. But how about the big guy there showing some agility? He just flowed from his D-tackle position in order to make that play. On fourth down on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And here's Rodgers on the return. So a good punt, but a solid 12-yard return. And it will be Eagles football first and 10. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And they were winners the last time they took the field, which was two weeks ago. They had the open week last week. So this is a squad that should be really refreshed and ready to roll. I would agree because when you get that open week after a victory, it does wonders for everyone. Obviously, your body get a chance to heal up, but your mind as well. You feel good about winning, so now you can get away from it for a few days, put down the playbook, you know, turn off the film. Just be you. Enjoy that time away, and then you come back ready to go. Off the play fake. Here's Hurts. Pass to Brown. He's got it on the crossing route. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 16 more on that one and another first down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Two minutes remaining in the first half. 10-7, our score. 
A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. The Eagle passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. A bit of a catch for him to remember. That's number 400 for his NFL career. Not a bad number at all. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. They'll look to throw again. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Goddard. Five yards. Now it's third and five. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks have told us end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Browns now are going to take over late in this first half. A slim deficit here in a one-possession game. Not much time left, obviously. We'll see if they can march this down the field, at least get three, and take some momentum into the locker room. To throw is Watson. They set up the screen to Chubb. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over at that time, and it's going to lead to third down. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. Here's Watson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. Again, it's Watson. And he'll get this one to Cooper complete. Touchdown! Amari Cooper, 56 yards. And the Browns are an extra point away from moving out in front in the final minute of the half. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, hey, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Extra point by York is up and good. And that will give him the lead here as we get on towards halftime. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Let's look at Kenneth Gainwell as this offense comes back out. Now Charles, you can't really fault him. He's over 100 yards already. He's not the reason they're losing. And that is really unusual because ordinarily, when you set the tone this way, and have run it this effectively, usually your team's in control. So it's a very strange situation. 
And you're right. He can't fall in. He's done a great job for his team thus far. I'm guessing he's saying, feed me on the sidelines. Now will they continue to do it? From the gun, it's Hurts. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Part of what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. Offside, defense. They knew they had the free play after the penalty. They get great yardage, so they can decline that penalty. That penalty is and one of the things we've seen develop more and more in recent years, our team seeing that penalty occur and still taking the big shot downfield and hoping to gain the yardage as we just saw there. They practice it, they work on it, and this time they're successful. They'll drop this underneath for game well. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Now second and three. They'll throw now on the final play. He's going to take a shot at the end zone. Why not? And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So they take a decent shot, CD, and the flag comes out for pass interference. Yeah, a little DPI, as they like to call it in the business, right? And the farther you get downfield, the more frenetic things get, and the more calm and controlled you have to remain as a defender. That was a little bit of a slip there, and the penalty will go against it. They run behind center with Gainwell. And he gets it into the end zone with no time left in the second quarter as they take the lead. So they brought the extra bulk in down on the one-yard line, and they're able to push this one across. Yeah, I can just see your face right now because I know we're mind-melding on this one. Coach Madden would love this. Power football, hat on a hat, chest to chest, driving forward, touchdown. So now with a late touchdown, not only will they take the lead to the locker room, but they'll try and add two more here. Hurts will throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this is picked up by the Browns. So we've come to halftime here in Philly with the Eagles on top. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks. A few teams starting to rise to the top as it's time to take you around the NFL here in Week 6. We'll begin up at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, and it's the Ravens out in front as that game moves towards halftime. Nelson Aguilar, a touchdown reception. From there, we head on over to Wisconsin to check on the Packers at home at Lambeau Field. And they've got the lead over the visiting Arizona Cardinals. Romeo Dobbs, a touchdown reception. Finally, let's get to the country music capital of the world. See what's happening with the Titans at home in Nashville. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. Will Levis with a touchdown pass to DeAndre Hopkins. We saw a strong first half out of running back Kenneth Gainwell. He's already over 100 yards rushing for the game and has a touchdown run as well. We saw a couple of high-octane offenses getting it done in the first half. Both teams had no problems moving the football. And you'd have to think, the team whose defense shows up in the second half is going to be the one who walks out of here with a victory. Both these teams making their final halftime adjustments. We're just about ready to get back to football. So for the call of the second half, we get back up to Philadelphia and Brandon God. Well, a dangerous return man showing it here. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, still a good return. They'll start the drive right around the 37. The Browns offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football, and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, 
to get things going here in the third quarter. Second down, here's Chubb again. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. 43 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And that, oh, nearly picked off. That would have been a great time for their first interception of the game. Instead, it's second down. And I think he was a little surprised to see the ball sitting out there like that. That's a ball he had a chance to come away with, but it winds up an incomplete pass. Now a second and ten. From the 50, it's Watson. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Finally hauled down for the first time this game. Multiple defenders in there to drop him. How about that? One of the so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. Following that sack, Watson and the Browns backed up for a third and long. They'll look to throw. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. They will indeed snap it to Watson. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to pick up the Browns' first down. So signals the referee as they're going to convert by about a yard there on fourth and five. Big conversion. Now it's Watson. To the left side and complete for Amari Cooper. His second catch. This one not quite as dynamic as his first. And it's second down. To the air yet again, Watson. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. Amari Cooper, his intended receiver, and it's third and five. Watson now to throw. That is caught. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Faking the give. Now Watson. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back into 32. Zach Ball coming in from that outside linebacker spot. He gets him down. It's a loss of five. Watson. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Back to throw, Watson. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. Elijah Moore, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Turn to the ground game, Chubb. And a pickup of about four down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Here's Watson. The quick slant caught. Touchdown, Browns! Cooper, his second touchdown of the afternoon. 
Road. And the Browns have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. I know we often laugh and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. Looking to maybe throw for it here, Watson. And this one incomplete. So they went for the two, they don't get it. And in the third quarter here, they were trying to push that to a three-point game, but instead it will stay at one. And I'm a big proponent of not chasing points or going for two too early. But in this case, I understand why. You know, if you kick an extra point, you're just up two, yeah. right? So field goal still puts the other team ahead. So you go for two here and protect the field goal lead. They didn't get it done now. So here are the Eagles now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth, almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27th. Hurt sets up to throw it. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And he's going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. Well, and Hurts is going to be hit and taken down to the ground. Well, Zadarius Smith there getting in and bringing him to the ground. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Quick slant here to Smith. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 48-yard line. On the handoff, Gainwell. And they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. 120 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. It's been an excellent day for him running the football, no doubt, as he continues to soar well past 100 yards. Yeah, it almost feels like he can just grab his briefcase and head home after putting in a full day's work at the office, doesn't it? And they'll go right back to Gamewell here on first down. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Well, this has been a good march down the field, but now they're stuck looking at a second and 14. Here's Hurts to throw. It's caught. Smith. Pass the 20. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. How about a nod to the sequence of plays they're putting together here? This has been death by a thousand paper cuts on this drive. But this is one of their best plays yet, and they're able to move it down into the red zone. On first and ten, it's game well. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. Three in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Flag comes in. This might be a free play. This is caught. Offside. Defense. So offside's the call, and they understandably decline it. And this is why we're seeing more and more that teams hiring that one coach to the staff that's in charge of all these things. This one's minor. It's pr pretty easy to figure out. But all the game management stuff, trying to help out the head coach in his decision-making process. They'll try to run it in, going option right. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. 
That sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Gainwell will get about halfway there as he takes this from the four down to the two. They get three yards closer, but still work to do. It's third and goal. Gainwell again. And he's in. Touchdown, Eagles. Kenneth Gainwell, his third rushing touchdown of the year. And the Eagles answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth quarter lead. And this is a time of game where offensive lines can really dictate a team's fortunes. It's been a tough battle. They've been out there for a long time. But this was a question of who can wear down who. And that's excellent work to put a long drive together and finish it with the touchdown run to take the lead. They'll try and throw for it. And it is incomplete, so they can't convert for two. And now the lead stays at five. Should have been picked. Probably doesn't matter on a two-point conversion, but still, as a former DB, you want to grab that ball when you can, don't you? You certainly do, and, and don't say it, because I know you're thinking it. Don't say it. <laughs> what am I thinking? You know what I'm thinking. I know what you're thinking. Well, if he'd had hands, he'd be playing on offense, right? Yeah, that's true. You've said that before. The Browns' offense and their quarterback, Deshaun Watson, set to take over once more. And we'll take you through some of the highlights here. You'll notice he had a hand in a lot of them so far. He's got this offense rolling right now. The Cleveland offense ready to go. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in the tight one. So just three yards on the completion there. And it'll be second down. From the gun, here's Watson. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. They go up the middle with Chubb. And across the midfield, stripe into Eagle territory. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And again, it's Chubb. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Here's Watson. This is the tight end, the Joku. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Good work after the catch. Going to net him 23 and a first. They give the Chubb out of the gun. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Jalen Carter in on that tackle. Now second and five. Now Chubb running right. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards. And it'll bring up a third and two more. Now Watson. Touchdown! Deshaun Watson, four touchdown passes now in the ball game, And the Browns have taken a fourth quarter lead. All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. Here's Chubb to try to run it in. And he will not get there. He comes up short. And they're unable to push this lead to a field goal as it'll remain a one-point game. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Eagles offense and their running back getting ready to go back to work. And as we take a look at some of the highlights, we see just how impactful he's been. He and his quarterback have such a great chemistry together, and it's been on full display throughout the contest.
Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Throwing his hurts. Over the middle to Smith. And now following the completion, we're going to get a stoppage here for an injury. This offense so far on third down, they're hitting at 60%. Six out of ten thus far. This is third and nine. He's got his target. That's complete. Well, he can take it down, but not before they work it across midfield. So a first and ten upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 47. Option handoff for Gainwell. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Hurts. And he's taken down. This will be a brown sack. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up third. From the gun, it's Hurts. That ball caught by Campbell. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big-time play for them. Nice completion, excellent game. Now they're in fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, with that marker. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And they've got a fourth down now in a game that, to be honest, has been pretty much everything we could have asked for. And this kick is not going to get there. It's short and no good. And that'll keep this a one-point game. Charles, 54 yards. I'm surprised that came up short. I would agree with that one because normally, if he misses, it's accuracy, not length. Because he has plenty of leg for that. But maybe it's like I hit my golf shot. You know, maybe it's like my wedge. You know, when you chili dip and you hit the ground ahead of it, sometimes that'll shorten your distance as well. And now a fake on the jet sweep and a give to Chubb. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. They'll run again. And he gets this only to the 44-yard line. Not near enough to keep the drive alive. The Browns send out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Hurts and the Eagles now down by one. A minute 36 to go. Needing at least 40 yards, you'd have to think, to have a shot. He'll get that complete to Albert O. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. A gain of four. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. And to find the open man, that's complete. And he will get out of bounds here as well. What a play. Big yardage. They stop the clock, and they move it to the boundary of field goal range as well. Final minute, one timeout remaining. First and ten. They'll look to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So an ideal set of circumstances there. They move the chains, and they save that final timeout. Late in the game, defense trying to avoid a big play. He's able to work out of the passing game, turn it into a run, pick up the first, and stop the clock as well. And you know in this situation, everything is sped up. The intensity, the thinking, everyone's movements. But for a quarterback, he has to continue to be what we call a flatliner. Level in everything he does and read the clock, 
feel it in the pocket, and go at the appropriate time. Sometimes it's hard to figure, but you can live with incompletions in this situation. You can't live with these short gains that take time off the clock. You know who loves it, this defense. And now they're going to get the timeout. A huge play has them in field goal range with a chance to win. Right now, everything resting on the right foot of Jake Elliott. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. And now it all rests on the right foot of their kicker. Two seconds on the clock, this for the win. And he's not able to come through. This is no good. And that is how this game comes to a close. Well, Charles, coaches always talk after losses about putting that behind you and moving on. But in a case like this, when you could have won it with a chip shot field goal and you miss it, that is going to sting for a little while, isn't it? Some are tougher to put behind you than others, right? We always talk about compartmentalizing. What is the rule, Coach? It's always about 24-hour rule yeah. after a game, and, and then you go. move on. That's tough because that was a very makeable field goal. In fact, I think you and I were both just shocked that he didn't knock it through the post, and they end up walking off the field losers. So for Cleveland, they climb back to 500 now at three up and three down. And they will head back.